I am now joined by a man that scored a decision victory over Georgie Karahanian this past weekend at Bellator 192, Henry Corrales, his third straight win. Henry, uh, appreciate you taking some time out here just a couple of days after uh, after this fight concluded. Of course, uh, you go down a little bit of history, the first Bellator fight uh, on the Paramount Network and uh, a very fun fight to watch, Henry. But for you, I know you've probably gone back and, and watched this fight a couple of times. H- how do you assess your own performance in the fight? Hey, thanks for having me, man. Um, uh, it's just typical. I'm, you know, I'm glad I got the victory. And um, we did stick to a game plan of a lot of pressure and a lot of action, which was pretty cool, too. But uh, I would have liked more of an output out of myself, to be honest with you. I know we we've talked about it in the past where you know I mean your, your last fight uh, against Lahat you mentioned about how you felt you you let your coach down a little bit uh, in that fight I mean and obviously I'm sure you're you're probably uh, you know your biggest you know you know looking at yourself and assessing yourself but is there is it just one of those things of like man I just fought a tough guy I just you know what I gotta give kudos for him because the finish just wasn't there yeah both both. Like, definitely, definitely credit to my opponent. That guy's tough, dude. He's like, he has like 35 fights, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know how many times he's been finished, maybe a couple, like once or twice out of those fights. And uh, he did a good job of, like, <clears throat> not putting himself in a position to get finished. So, uh, yeah, a lot of credit to him, dude. This guy's really good. You know, in terms of, uh, you know, overall, how are you feeling a couple of days after? I mean, did you pretty much come out of this training camp and fight, uh, you know, fairly healthy? Yeah, I feel good, man. I, um, a little sore, a little tender, but, uh, that, you know, that comes with a, t- a tough spot fight. I've always wondered, I don't know if, we, if, if it's ever come up in the conversation we had in the past. How did you get the nickname OK. Uh, my, my, one of my first trainers, like we, we shared a gym with a, with a, like a boxing school and there's a bunch of professional boxers and, uh, I was just coming off the streets and I had really no experience and he's, he would be like, you got to spar with this professional boxer. And I'd be like, okay. Or like, he'd be like, you got to flip these tires. And I'd be like, okay. And he was, he would always be like, fuck dude, you ever, you ever not down to do anything? <laughs> You're always just. I was just okay with everything, and uh, that and the uh, the famous gunfight at the OK Corral. And, and of course, after his last... fi- you know after his fight was over, last... everyone really talked about the last three fights for you and, and the move to the lab, and and of course you know with Eddie you know going there, um, you know for you, you know. What would you want the narrative to be after this fight about, uh, you know, what you were able to accomplish, you know, last Saturday night and, and what you've been able to accomplish the last, uh, the two previous fights? Uh, just being a product of my own placement, I guess. What I've been to accomplish the last, you know, three straight victories coming off some losses. Like I said earlier about the product of my own place, it would just be just my team, man. Like if it wasn't for them, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in this position. So I think that's just, I should, that's just the the theme lately of my career. It's kind of just like all all the glory to them, man. They, they've uh, they've helped me so much. Just kind of like revamp my career, you know what I mean? You know, and when we talked prior to this fight, you mentioned the fact of, hey, you know, look, Georgie's a, you know, a highly ranked guy at, at Bellator's 145 pound division. I mean, even John McCarthy in your post fight interview talked about how, uh, you know, you had gone through a murderous row to to start your Bellator career. But I mean, right now, because of what you've been able to do, you're you're right in the mix. I mean, ha- have you talked about to Bellator about you know where your place is in the 145 pound division? No, no, not at all. Actually, the the only you know the only uh, I don't I don't call out any fighters. You know what I mean? Only 
like I would like the guys I would like to fight the guys that I lost to, and you know I could call them out because I already fought them. You know what I mean? And they're cool and and we had entertaining fights. So if I would have to think about fighting somebody, it'd be you know obviously to fucking you know fight somebody who I already fought before and that beat me up. You know. And when you look at those three losses, you know, Daniel re- recovering from that motorcycle accident, Patricio Pitbull, you know, who knows who his next fight, maybe it's going to be at 155 pounds. That would leave Emmanuel Sanchez. That's Is that the fight that in an ideal world, like, hey, sign me up, let, let's run that thing back? Oh, absolutely. But when it comes down to it, um, with any fighter, with anybody that's they put me up again, so I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. I've never said no to a fight. I've actually never even thought twice about accepting a fight, to be honest with you. And uh, that'd be cool, man. I had, I, had a, I had a good time, our first fight. You know, super close, split decision. And, uh, yeah, it'd be cool to get back in there and uh, collect a paycheck with a cool dude, you know? Mm-hmm. Of course, this fight with Georgie took place in California. Been, you know, widely talked about what California is doing with with their weight cutting and, uh, you know, making sure that guys, you know, are not dehydrating themselves too much. For you, now, now fighting in California under these rules, what, what's your take of what California is doing and making sure that that guys are not, uh, you know, putting on so much weight after they they officially make weight. Oh, man, that's a tough one, dude, because people's bodies are different, man. Like, I don't have a hard time making 45 at all. And I cut, I don't know, 10 pounds, like 12, 10 pounds, you know what I mean? But my body, after weighing, it just won't, like, re- like I just absorb so much water, and it just, I keep it. I don't... So I put on more than the recommended 15 pounds that they allow. You know, I put on like I think 18 pounds. And so uh, I got to be a little bit more strategic next time. But I never even heard about this whole weight cutting thing. So two days before, I sh- like a day before I showed up to the event, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, dude, I've never even heard of this. So like I, if I would have got more notice, I would have been more prepared. You know what I mean? Are you concerned that the commission's going to come back at you and say we're not going to license you at 145 again? Not really, because um, it wasn't like it just said the rule said you're at risk of not being able to compete at that weight class mm-hmm. again. So I'm sure I'm sure they'll give me some type of chance to fucking make it make it happen. You know what I mean? But with the you know with full with full notice of that with full notice of. Uh, of that of those rules you know what i mean i it shouldn't it shouldn't be a problem in terms of a, a timetable of when you want your next fight to take place i mean I, I know that you know you've talked to me in the past about you know you know short notice fights haven't haven't gone your way but you know what well, you offer me a fight i'm stepping up but I, ideally i mean is it a three-month window of ideally when you'd like to to step back inside the bellator cage yeah, three to four times a year is like a cool number. It sounds it, it sounds good. It feels good. So yeah, yeah, three or four, three or four or five a year is always it's always fun. You know, as we're talking, we're just a couple of days after this fight's over. Are you already back in the gym, or or are you allowing yourself to kind of you know recover and, and kind of uh, you know enjoy a, a you know quote unquote normal life? Yeah, I've been for the last seventy-two hours. I've been grubbing, man. That's been I've been eating everything, and uh, all my buddies and all my you know my family. Everybody's pulling me to all these different restaurants to, to go eat. So I've been doing that, and I just left Los Angeles. I just left, and I'm driving right now as we speak through the desert to Arizona. I'm gonna go actually train right now at uh, at four p.m. Oh, cool, cool. Now, in terms of yeah, yeah. In terms of the food, uh, is there always a go-to item after the fight is over that you go to? Like, hey, I, you know, that's what I gotta have. Dude, just no. It's just super gluttonous, dude. It's definitely overeating's on the menu. I don't have, I don't have 
like right now, I have zero self discipline. Like I'm eating till I'm sick every meal. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you're probably gonna end up paying for that uh, when you step inside the gym later today. Yeah, for sure, dude. I'm only working out tonight just so I can eat some more later. Henry, as always, man, I, I appreciate the time. Congratulations on the victory, and, uh, of course, look forward to seeing your next fight, man. Hey, nice talking to you, dude. Have a good day.